a quick disclaimer before you watch the video please uh, stay till the end of the video because there will be a poll where in which you can episode uh, you know vote which thing i will cover in the next episode of rocket monday thank you now with on with the show hello youtube viewers welcome to my show rocket monday in today's episode we're going to take a look at space shuttle nasa's deadliest mistake so let's dive right into it first you have to understand why they were planning to re, uh, build space shuttle so they had to retire this saturn 5 system which was an expendable system basically use and throw sort of system and it was quite successful quite safe however idiotically expensive as in if you inflation compensate their uh, cost you are talking about roughly 1 uh, 1 billion to 1.5 billion per launch so suffice to say it was quite expensive however it was also a super heavy lift rocket as in it could send more than 50 tons how much basically they successfully managed to put 130 ton into low earth orbit suffice to say this rocket is a big rocket and here this image should give you a sense that's a small truck size of a one of its engine f1 engine so they had the system they got the things worked out and in the last mission uh, last launch of this rocket they sent a skylab rocket and basically it was a space station and they figured it out they have to build a space station now and how they're gonna build it they worked out the logistics so they had to build a new launch vehicle so they wanted to retire this and they wanted to make sure the re replacement that they're gonna build would be cheap as in very low cost 1.5 billion dollar per launch was not uh, let's just say it was not going well with the senators and the congress for that reason they wanted to make sure the cost is low Second, they, how they're going to make the cost low was they wanted to practice out reusability, how they're going to, you know, uh, recover as much parts of the system as they can. And this was a requirement from Department of Defense. They wanted to cre uh, create something called quick turnaround time. Basically, uh, once your rocket is used, the next rocket should be sent as quickly as possible. They were aiming for roughly 15 day turnaround. Basically, from first launch to second launch, there should be 15 day gap. Uh, Think of it this way, how SpaceX is trying to do 48 hour turnaround, this was the same. And the reason why Department of Defense wanted to create something that quickly, as in you know, that quick turnaround, is was the, at that time they were developing something known as Star Wars Protocol. They will have high-end uh, ICBM interceptors in uh, low Earth orbit. And because they might have to replenish that if one ICBM attacks happens, because to intercept one ICBM, they were planning to use upwards of 20 counter IC, um, like counter penetrators because there was no way to get uh, guarantee 100% hit and one ICBM that goes through you it's more than enough to do enough damage so they wanted to make sure that like if they have the system they can you know quickly replenish it as in like you know let's say they spent 50% uh, of the first launch they quickly gonna send uh, and quickly 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 build up a shield so they really at that time really wanted that quick turnaround time so all these things done so what design we finalize into is that design now it was using srb at that time kind of uh, many people kind of find it odd srbs are not ever looked as as a safe alternative for human transport like it's okay if you want to just send payloads but uh, nobody wants to use that srb in uh, human rated systems they have no abort system basically once they uh, light up they're gonna run uh, they're gonna run as long as they have to or as long as their fuel is there so the reason why SRBs were chosen for this system was uh, this was a dual uh, edge sword. Basically, if they were using ICBMs to test ICBMs, they have to actually launch the ICBM. The problem with that, if you test your ICBM, your opponent, like in that scenario, Russia will figure out how your ICBM works. That is not a good thing. However, ICBM cannot use liquid fuels because A, the liquid fuel available at that time were not uh, very high specific impulse and not to mention cryogenic, which does have high specific impulse, does not have uh, launch ready alert so they had to use srb for icbms now how do they're gonna improve srb without you know letting the world know that they are building the icbm implemented in nasa this was department of defense request that you know use srb that's why like even though first saturn system did not use any sort of add-on boosters they had to use it because this was like a this was a suggestion that was given to nasa it's like use srbs and uh, second suggestion from uh, Department of Defense, which was the most deadly one, was that they ha they required a specific payload size, not the weight, as in the weight requirement was not that high from Department of Defense. Like, you know, we want, uh, let's say 15 tons to lower power, which is not that high. 
however the specification requirement that the design requirement they said like the volume that was way too big and uh, nasa wanted to remove that simply because if they shrink it down even just few percent like as in 10 to 30 percent shrinkage it will save uh, you know a lot of money in rocket design development because they were pushing it like just trying to make that a bit bigger it it was like completely changed the rocket size rocket volume rocket usability everything so these two suggestions from department of defense was kind of a very big uh, design element into the main space shuttle design and uh, the sad part is even though the de de department of defense asked them for a specific payload specification they never used it and so nasa after all the specification they settled on to what's called partially reusable basically they're gonna reuse the most expensive part which is these engine the best engine ever built i'm like you can debate around that but so far this is the best engine closed cycle engine and they wanted to recover it and srvs the icbm technology basically it will also come to land and uh, they're gonna recover it basically this is not a reuse system they're gonna uh, collect it strip the paint polish the metal again rebuild it from ground up so all they are saving here is just the basically flight data and a uh, lot of metal but it was at the end this turned out so expensive that they are like yeah this is why space launch system even though they have uh, same boosters they are not reusing it they're like just use and throw it is recovering it is so much expensive so that was the design element department of defense played a very crucial role into it so what we got in the other end well we got something very slow turnout so flat out mid like uh, once the first shuttle was launched second and third shuttle it was quite clear no matter what happens they're not gonna get the quick turnaround that uh, department of defense needed so department of defense flat out is like no uh, they started to develop something else i made a video about that here and uh, once department of defense pulled out and uh, other things also happened the first is it ended up so expensive so expensive that it was costing more or less the same if not more than saturn 5 and not to mention this was very dangerous like in 100 uh, less than 200 mission two of them blew up and uh, this is the first disaster and this is the second disaster now the sad part about both of this disaster is that it was preventable both of them first one srb this was very painful for nasa simply because there was an engineer that was uh, you know as you see many of people uh, working in the flight and control room there are people who are dedicated to one job like you know you just take care of the range safety you take care of the srb you take care of the fuel tank you take care of the engines so these these people are like flight uh, flight range ready so engineers when they saw it because the, they had to delay the launch when this shuttle was uh, you know on launch pad they had to delay the launch because the weather was not clearing up so they kept the launch uh, the instead of scrubbing the launch as in just cancel it they delayed it like okay let's they had the launch window for a while so they were like okay let's let's wait to see whether the you know environment cleared up it does clear up like you know the they got the window to go ahead as in like weather gave them the green light however at that time an engineer called them it's like please scrub this launch because srb like uh, this solid rocket booster you see they are built in segments and that's where the most srbs fail the segment is joined by what's called o-ring now normal srbs generally use one o-ring this is a human rated system so they were building two o-rings however the engineer specifically called the at the time when the shuttle was in launch pad the temperature as in the outside ambient temperature dropped below zero degrees celsius as in ice was falling up as in the o-rings were compromised this happened before the rocket was launched engineer tried to warn nasa it's like bro just cancel it just cancel it the o-rings are not designed to handle it boom they launched it this happened they saw this on screen and it uh, if you see the any footage continuous footage of this that this starts to leak out then it seals up because the soot that is being generated from the srb sealed it up but once they reach into higher uh, high altitude there is a sort of jet stream wind hits it and then it dislodges it then it leaks out and that time uh, srb is firing at much higher thrust factor as in like it's much more powerful at that time it's burning at max capacity it just punches a hole into the orange fuel tank and boom this was 100 percent avoidable it's not like you know somebody could have done differently somebody followed the procedure and wanted to stop this launch this did not happen 
then we come to the second launch like after this nasa took a lot of precautions a lot of measurements were done and and after that if somebody would have said like you know scrub the launch there was no doubt it would not nobody would have cared if uh, you know a janitor would have said like scrub the launch they would have scrubbed the launch flat out they realized people's lives are not cheap and not to mention that blowing up is also very expensive so they took a a lot of uh, lessons from that disaster but after that the idea was like okay now space shuttle is you know foolproof but even then the second disaster happened and in this scenario uh, this uh, my country lost an astronaut known as kalpana chawla the challenger disaster now problem in that disaster is that uh, nasa has used what are, what's called range for cameras basically there are a lot of cameras that will track the rocket as it goes up and this is done to track debris basically what is falling over and all that so there was debris falling over and you can find the video footage uh, i will try to link it below and you can see there was a debris that hit the wing this place this is what's called reinforced carbon carbon basically basically is a thermal armor now this thermal armor it was never tested for what's called bird strike basically uh, bird strike is not same as space strike but uh, bird strike basically refer to the idea have you tested it to its breaking point basically in uh, aircraft industry windshield of the aircraft is generally tested with a bird strike as in like uh, they will keep the windshield intact and then they'll try to break it using a bird firing bird at relative speed as in if the plane is meant for let's say 300 kmph small plane they will fire the bird at 300 kmph to see whether it can handle that no such test was done on this and even though this was on side of a rocket the reason why you see the orange insulation on the rocket that's the reason the insulation was done so there was no icing like it does not ice does not build up and then fall because that will kill the shuttle flat out so but nobody had thought like what if the foam breaks off and it's not like it never happened foam did break off but most of the time it caused no damage in the this system it did cause damage and here's the tea once the space shuttle reached to the orbit a uh, lot of engineers go through the footage and be like okay let's see what happens and like you know it has there something wrong they also found out there is a issue something happened like there was no absolute detail there was no like okay there i am pretty sure wing is compromised they asked uh, department of defense is like uh, can you please you know uh, let's uh, look around the shuttle let's see what what's what and you know is there a damage or not the reason this time nasa cancelled that request is simply because they knew even if uh, there is a fault like something like this has happened there was no way to save them so inherently they had this idea of you know it's better for them to uh, you know don't expect anything and just randomly die rather than then you know uh, be stuck in space until the air runs out so for that reason the second time second disaster happened so is there um, a lesson here like why the heck this many things happen first the unnecessary department of defense requirement this was a primary factor why a space shuttle was so bloated they never used it second there were too much optimism into building a like this is the best example i can show you is this is what nasa was thinking like you know this is how they're going to refurbish a space shuttle this is what they need to refurbish a space shuttle so this is why like there were optimism was way too damn high like they were this is like even an aircraft needs more maintenance than this and they're like we could just going to open the you know cargo bay door and just lower the payload lock it up everything good too much optimism and bad management as i already told you like the first one was so obvious that it was like painful like somebody is calling you somebody is telling you please scrub the launch and you did not scrub the launch and people died so and not to mention overall this is uh, what i like about spacex as i made a video about uh, secrets of spacex you can check it out here is that it's too complex the reason why spacex can successfully even make a cheap rocket even go to international space station and come back and reuse the boosters is because it's very simple this system inherently was idiotically expensive to give you an idea it has three types of engine srb solid rocket booster then uh, liquid fuel uh, liquid fuel rocket engine the rs25 then it also has orbital class the you see the three main engine then you see two small nozzles those are orbit maneuvering engines so it had three engines how much engine uh, spacex has one basically they have one type of engine that's it they just have nine in the first stage and uh, one in the second stage so you can see like the inherently there were so many things into the system built into it that refurbishing it was expensive building it was expensive everything every aspect of it was expensive and not to mention because this was a uh, government funded uh, 
let's just say they were not very great with the money. So is there a silver lining of this uh, disaster? Well, yes. First, this forced, as in like this is the sole reason why there is a commercial resupply mission. Simply because if NASA successfully would have had built a proper space shuttle that did not had, you know, did not have the tendency to kill the astronauts, they would have still used it. Even though it was meant to be retired, uh, they would have successfully de delayed its retirement, reused it, and they did not have been uh, put in a situation where they have to have to go to Russia for uh, their astronaut launch. So this created a scenario, a power vacuum, if you will, where NASA had to create a system to you know compete from its own ground. Basically, they're like, okay, we can send our own astronauts. So to create that, they created what's called commercial resupply mission, and results of which orbital ATK. And I don't think I need to give you an example of that, but this is Dragon Capsule. Basically, this whole thing happened because NASA was forced to privatize. Why they were forced? Because Space Shuttle was retired early without a replacement. Why it was retired early? It was unsafe. And this also forced NASA to do much better management. Now, the SLS system from, is, is being built from day one for safety. As in like from day one, they are making sure that no matter what happens, Whatever happens to rocket, whatever happens to the you know launch pad, they get their astronaut back. The launch abort system has been tested thoroughly, and they're gonna uh, they are very confident that even if SRB blows up, they can still save the astronaut. And not to mention the engine that we got out of that. That was phenomenally awesome engine. And as uh, many of you know, yesterday uh, Elon Musk held a press conference where he was talking about Raptor engines and the first private citizen that will go around the moon. The engine, methane, uh, methane powered engine, still does not have the specific impulse of these puppies. These puppies can go up to 452 seconds of specific impulse. Now, of course, that mainly comes from being the fact that they're using hydrogen. Hydrogen gives you the best specific impulse. So, as you can see, and this is the core reason why SR, uh, Space Launch System, on which I have made a video here, Space Launch System is using this. This is the best engine that we have ever built. Like, of course, you might say, okay, this engine, F1 engine may have more power and this uh, Raptor engine may be cheaper or things of that nature. But overall, this engine can work from sea level to vacuum and with this efficiency. So suffice to say, and it's reusable. So suffice to say, flat out, this was the best thing that came out of it. Second best thing for every one of us is that commercial resupply missions, because of which SpaceX is there now, because of which a lot of people are interested in space. So there is a silver lining to this. This was my presentation on the matter and I would suggest you pay, uh, pay attention to the poll that will appear here hopefully. And I would suggest if you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Leave a comment and I would suggest you to subscribe and please press the bell icon if you are free. And as always, thanks for watching.